happy Monday, everyone. Hope you're all having a great week. I'm not sure why I'm so crooked. Oh, well, I am. Um, today is Monday. It feels like a Monday to me. Hope you're having a good one. It's been a lovely rainy spring day here in Kimberly. Things are looking green and we'll be painting outside before you know it. Today I want to talk about a bit of technical painting stuff. Some of these 10 minute Mondays are more about uh, life as an artist and sometimes we're just going to get right down to basics and talk about fine art and what it means and what you need to do to paint a really masterful painting. I had a conversation last week with an artist and she says, oh, there's no rules in fine art. You can do what you want. And I agree in many aspects of that. And then in some aspects, I also believe what Picasso said when he said, painting is easy. You just have to put the right color in the right spot. And I also want to just like, Talk about the masters. Talk about Michelangelo and Renoir and Jackson Pollock's abstracts and how they all had the same five fundamental rules of fine art in all of their paintings, no matter what they were painting. So my mentor was a stickler for the rules of fine art. She told me, you learn the rules of fine art and then at the end of my time with her, she says, okay, now I want you to forget everything you taught, I taught you, and I want you to just paint. So that's where the creativity part comes from. You just, you learn the rules of fine art, and then you know how to break them. You can go crazy and do what you want, but you've got to have an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. And there are no rules. Absolutely, I agree. You just got to learn the rules and then go with it and then paint and be free and inspired and paint what you want and break the rules, but you want to break the rules knowing you're breaking the rules. So five rules of fine art. Now, when you're dealing with the rules, it's important to know this statement. Balance requires dominance. It took me a long time to figure that one out. What does that mean to you? To me, it means you take each of the rules and you do a little of each. So one of the rules, number one, is line. You have to have good line in your painting. And you want some to be hard lines, some to be soft lines, some to be long, some to be short. And guess what? You don't want them 50-50. You want some more longer than others. You don't want them equal. That's what balance requires dominance means. You also need a variety of shape. That's rule number two. Shape. You want a whole bunch of different kinds of shapes. You don't want your painting all circles or all ovals or all square or all straight edges. You don't want repetition. So that's again, balance requires dominance. I'm going to say that a lot in this 10 minutes. And with your shapes, don't forget that your negative shapes are actually more important than the positive shapes. What does that mean? So a positive shape would be the shape of a tree. And next to that tree, there'll be a little tree where the, the branches intersect. And then between those branches, there's a little bit of sky showing. That little shape of sky, that's your negative shape. And that is even more important than the tree shape. So give that some thought. Let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw some, some things at you today and I hope it is something new for you. Rule number three 
is your composition. So where exactly do you put these lines and shapes? You have to avoid the middle of your canvas. I saw some lovely round canvases at an art gallery on Friday night. I was at an art opening and round gives you a whole different composition than a rectangular canvas. A square canvas is another composition altogether. Where to put those trees, mountains, or if you're doing an abstract, where do you put those strokes, those lines, those dribbles, those marks? It has to all be planned out. And again, you want balance requires dominance. Don't do all sky or all land. You've got to have part sky and have one more dominant than the other. Maybe you want a whole sky painting with just a little land. One or the other has to be more dominant. That's a very important part of composition. And then there are the last two rules of fine art. Value and color. Hello, Siobhan. I think these are probably sounding familiar to you from the art lessons that I've taught. Thank you for your comment. Value and color. I had a discussion the other day with Julie DeBoer about whether value is more important than color or vice versa. There's a whole debate. And to me, I think they're both pretty phenomenally important. Now value, I want you to think of a black and white photograph with no color in it at all. That's the meaning of value. You've got to have a good variation of darks, mediums, lights, and whites. And you don't want too much dark or too much light, but you don't want them even Stephen equal. One needs to be more dominant than the other. So yeah, if you don't have good value in your paintings, good lights, mediums, and darks, then you will not have a good painting, most likely. Julie commented on somebody who was trying, attempting a painting of all the same value. So I, I, I want to, if you hear about that and it's a success, please let me know because I want to see it. That's an example of maybe somebody's breaking the rules and succeeding. I don't know. I haven't seen it myself. So if you've seen one, send it my way. I want to see it. And then the last very important topic is color. Now, color is a huge, huge topic because there's so many different things to learn. Color theory is a very, I could do many 10 minutes just talking about color. You want to have your complementary colors. The opposite things of the, on the, on the color wheel. You need to have warms and darks and a variation of those. Cool colors recede in the distance. Warm colors come towards you. So it's important that you have a good understanding of what colors are warm and what colors are cool. When I think about warm colors, I think about a red hot fireplace, campfire with orange and yellow and red flames going crazy. When I think of cool colors, I think of an iceberg, blue, green, aqua, cool, cold water, icy cold. Those are your cool colors, okay? Just so you get a bit of a visual. And then it gets a little complicated when you start, you know, having a warm green versus a cool green. And greens, as you, if you've ever done the landscape, you know greens are not easy. But it's really, really important to learn how to mix a warm green. When you add an extra bit of yellow into your green, you're gonna, that'll be good for your foreground. If you add blue into your green, that'll be good for your trees off in the distance. It'll make them look further away. So there's just a little bit of a 
tasty tidbit of the fundamentals of fine art. And I dare you, please, look at a Michelangelo painting. Look at the Mona Lisa. And you look at the, the landscape far off in the distance. And guess what? They're going to be cool colors. Leonardo was the founder of aerial perspective. That's what the cool colors in the distance. He's the one that came up with that term. And I dare you, look at every famous art history painting. And I guarantee that that's, these five things will be in there. Cezanne was a bit of a rebel and he, he pushed the envelope. He broke some of the rules, but he knew them and understood them very well. So there's your homework for the week. Go look at an art history book and ponder these thoughts and let me know what you think. All right, have a great week and I will see you back here next week. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. I did a free Mastrius demo of painting a waterfall and it can be found, the video, on the Mastrius YouTube page. So check that out if you want to see me painting in action and how I, I talk a lot about these theories as I did my demo. So um, go to Mastrius YouTube channel, check it out. You can see me in action. And also I've got an interview coming up this week. I think it's Wednesday at 5. Uh, go to my Instagram and you can see uh, I've posted the information about my art talk with April. We had a lovely conversation. She's from Alabama and we had a great time. So check that out while you're at it. And um, don't forget my Mastrius mentorship course is also coming up on May the 15th. If you are interested in chatting with me once a month and learning more about what I have to teach, come join me or come join one of my weekly art lessons online or in person. Okay, that's my little spiel. I hope you enjoyed my fundamentals. And uh, look, I'm two minutes over. Gotta go. Have a great week. Bye.